Hello friends, hope you are well. Welcome to The Dirt Report, tech and telco news solely based in Australia, soon to be deleted by Google, caused by the Australian government. Maybe. Hope you had a great Australia Day last week and got off the booze bus at the right stop. No one wants to end up at the end of the line in Vomitron City. In any case, we have some great news for you today, so let's get started. Today we have the NBN Co requirements for fiber upgrades are becoming reality. Google's battle with Australia rages on and the international tidbits, we have GameStop's share shenanigans, a lot of shush. Thanks for jumping in, make sure you like this video if you did and subscribe to support this channel. Let's roll the intro. It's getting closer to the day we all have fiber, or at least we hope. Maybe one day we're going to lead the world in our fiber. But for now, NBN Co has drafted a new requirement for you to be included in this so-called free upgrade. A few months back, we had the big announcement that all or at least most fiber to node connections will be getting an upgrade to at least fiber to the curb, or if you requested an upgrade to fiber directly to your home. Back then, there was very little information as to how you would qualify for the upgrade. The speculation was that you just need to request it and then Paul Fletcher mentioned we would need to specify a higher plan than what we can achieve right now on our copper line. So if you can only get 20 megabits down, you would only have to request a 50 down plan from your RSP with no contract minimums. That was very specified. Well, this week, all that has started to fall out the window and we finally get to see the reality of our soon to be situation. Opposite from these Senate estimates, which asked for only single tier upgrades, this new draft code has copied the way NBN upgrades business lines. You will now have to request at least the 250 down plan and attach it to a long term contract for NBN Co to recover their costs with the RSP. This is a pretty far jump from last year when NBN Co said there would be no major requirements for residential customers to request a supposedly free upgrade. Last year, NBN Co's CCO Brad Whitcomb told the Senate estimates that we don't have any lock-in with the retailers. That would be up to the retailer themselves. If the customer signed a contract with the retailer, the retailer may hold them to it, but that wouldn't be NBN's decision. But it is now. I suppose nothing in this world is free and NBN Co doesn't seem to think far ahead either. They should have known that these kinds of amendments will happen and spread the public in some way, shape or form. There are also threats of downgrade fees where a customer has received their upgrade and they choose to downgrade their 250 Mbps down. This would be quite painful, especially if you end up moving homes or have financial difficulties. I'm sure they'll work it out, but nonetheless. So to summarize, it seems the plan to receive the upgrade will start at the 250 down plan. Then after February 19th, when the RSPs have made the recommendations, we will know what kind of contract term will be included in that 250 down plan. But it's all subject to change. For now, it's not looking very good. From what I can see, Enminco is trying to stop people getting the upgrade willy nilly and making sure only those who really need it and will use it, get it. For example, my wife's 90 year old grandmother received fiber to the home almost six years ago and never once used it. In fact, NBN Code destroyed her front garden to connect her. So from my point of view, yeah, all right, let the ones who want it get it, but only for the first round. After that, everyone gets fiber, no matter the plan or contract. Let me know below if NBN Code's approach is the right one or if you have a different solution. We'll chat there. Let's move on. It's time to talk Google again because it's all escalated rather quickly. You have obviously seen the yellow pop up on your Google search. Very annoying, I know. But for those who clicked, we're taken to a video of Melina Silva, the Australia and New Zealand Managing Director for Google Asia Pacific. I have linked it below for your viewing pleasure, but again, it's easy to find. In the video, she puts on a very strong bravado using her facial expressions to say, I'm right, you're wrong. Google is more powerful than you think and ultimately it feels like mom's telling me it's not my fault she's angry with dad and probably going to leave him if he doesn't change his ways and dad's off fishing. Nonetheless, the message is clear. Or is it? At this stage, Google has taken steps to get the public on their side and just like any other campaign by a large corporation who many believe is evil and has been spying on people, it has gone by the wayside. Nonetheless, it has come off as a bit of a threat and hence the ACCC's response. Um, and they're not taking it very well. But before that, make sure to like this video and subscribe because you don't know how long before Google removes YouTube. But wait, there's more. Before we talk ACCC, Google has been doing the dodgy. 
They're basically a few things on the sly, under the table, behind the shed, or wherever you want to call it, or wherever you want to do it. Google has been making deals with news corporations separate from the media code. Technically, they are going behind both the ACCC's back and their own. They're contradicting their own threats to pull search out of Australia. They seem to be playing both sides to see who wins, but that just doesn't make sense. Google has approached smaller media companies and certainly strong-armed them into making deals with them based on Google's own version of the media code. They are playing a very dangerous and odd game. This makes Silver's statement of, it's not a threat, it's a reality, if this version of the code were to become law, it would give us no real choice but to stop making Google search available in Australia. Not very clear. So which is it? Will you make deals under the table? Or are you pulling the search? At this stage, I'm keen to just say, pack your shit and go, as Bill Maher would say. The video says there is a better way, and if you navigate to the webpage, that basically says exactly the same stuff that they say in the video, with no particularly clear suggestion as to what Google's version of the code would entail and how it is better, hence the Google kind of not having choice but to pull out. Google's best solution at this stage is the Google News Showcase, which directly funds news publishers, with 1.3 billion already put into this fund. It sounds pretty good, but again, how long will that money last? Will they put in 1.3 billion again just to fund these news corporations? Who's allowed to be a part of it? There are a lot of questions. But there are a few other choices. One that I think has some merit is that if Google is in the right, and I kind of feel like they are, they can just blacklist news websites and stop indexing them, which will damage the news corporations significantly. However, it will damage smaller independent journalists. The problem here is that the Australian media code does no better for the independents anyway. So back to ACCC. On the last sitting in Parliament, ACCC's Rod Sims introduced the following changes to the code. In time interval for informing publishers about algorithm changes was changed for a longer period. Digital platforms were allowed to factor in the value of the service they provide to a news organisation in monetary terms before the quantum of payment is decided. There may be some math to it. The law will only apply to Google search and Facebook news feed. YouTube and Instagram are not covered. There is another problem. A corporation like Google should not be able to dictate the laws of a sovereign country like Australia. No matter how much you may hate the current sitting party nor its large head of state, even if Murdoch is pushing his own agenda onto them, allowing Google to have so much control over a country is rather concerning. On the other hand, the way the internet works could seriously be undermined with laws like this, and all because news corporations who are like Blockbuster, slowly bleeding out, are not changing with the times. Let me know your thoughts below. Let's move on to our international tidbits, but before we do, make sure to like this video and subscribe, of course. This week, Reddit realized they have more power than a couple of billionaires and decided to troll them. Troll these billionaires to lose over $1 billion and counting. So what happened? Well, an American hedge fund decided to short GameStop stock. Now, GameStop is actually the parent company of our dearly beloved, always on sale EB Games. Now, GameStop was in the middle of transforming from purely game selling brick and mortar store to a more hang out with your friends, play some retro games and maybe buy something while you're at it. But then the human malware hit and everything closed down. GameStop shares were on the way down and some Wall Streeters decided to short the stock. Now, what's a short, you may ask? Well, a short or a short position is created when a trader sells a security first with the intention of repurchasing it or covering it later at a lower price. A trade may decide to short a security when they believe that the price of the security is likely to decrease in the near future. So for example, if I short a stock worth $10, I borrow the stock from a shareholder or a broker, sell it at $10, wait for the stock price to fall and then buy it back at the lower price of let's say $5, meaning I just made five bucks per share. However, if the price goes up and I have to return the share back, I have to buy it at this higher price. The longer I hold onto the share, the more money I lose because there's some fees and bits and pieces and I have to buy at this higher amount and hence lose money. So what happened next was a one in a million generation scenario. The folks at Wall Street Brats subreddit found out about the short and decided to rally the troops and buy GameStop shares to raise the price, hence making the hedge fund lose millions of dollars due to having to rebuy the shares, which in turn made the shares 
share prices go up again and again. It was a bit of a weird feedback loop. Losses have already surpassed $1 billion and they seem to be going up. For the first time in our lives, relatively poor people played the stock market, manipulated it, and the boomers up on Wall Street were just a shocked Pikachu face. And on that capitalistic bombshell, we have to end this episode. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video if you did and subscribe. And if you would like to support us directly, you can tap the join button below. Thanks for watching and bye. Thank you.